Welcome back to another expert session slash product review. This time I am joined by HP. Please introduce yourself. Hi, uh, which camera? Yeah, yeah, anyone. Anyone, yeah. So, uh, hi, I'm uh, Alex Klug. I work at HP as a product development manager, um, focused on data science solutions. Um, so it's my job to uh, look at and see what are some of the unsolved pain points uh, in the industry, specifically when dealing with local compute, okay. um, obviously what we produce, um, and try to create new software solutions that um, kind of help fix those problems. So da data science specialized, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I have uh, a couple of HP workstations, yep. and I find them very useful, despite that we're in the cloud era. Yep. And uh, I think some people think that, uh, you know, it was really funny when I worked at Microsoft, people used to talk about the post-PC era. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Ha ha, Forrester, <laughs> and everybody that thought they knew what they were talking about. Anyway, yeah. we're not post-PC, I don't yeah. think. But, uh, so you're data science specialized, and I guess the cool thing is, there's, there's an implication that the workstations are used in many domains, not only data science. Yes. So what domains are they used in that's not data science, before we get to data science, and, sure. and why that's become a specialization now? Yeah, so I mean, traditionally, like media and entertainment uh, is, a, is a main use case for us. Um, uh, uh, architecture, engineering, um, design is a big use, say, product development. Um, so a lot of traditional, we actually you know, have won multiple Emmys uh, and Oscars for our, our workstation solutions. Okay. Um, supporting like Pixar films, for instance, uh, DreamWorks. Right. Makes animation, uh, a lot of renderings done. Um, so that's a big use case. Um, but obviously, anyone who requires within their workflow high performance machines are who we're going after. Hmm. Um, and so, more and more these days, that's data science and AI. Hmm. Um, and so, a couple years back, we kind of noticed that trend and we're like, hey, you know, like we're, we're seeing this demand, we're seeing these opportunities. Um, how can we kind of invest and take advantage of that um, in this growing field? So, luckily, we. Uh, Maybe we're a little bit more uh, precedent about it than others uh, and started investing in that and we're, we're continuing to do so. Um, so what's really cool being at HP is like my team specifically focused on solving those problems for data scientists and, and looking and seeing how we can make these solutions even better for them. Yeah, well it's funny to me because I think for quite a few years now when I've been thinking about you know, what, what applications there are for super powerful machines, yeah. scientific computing, immediately you know, comes to mind for me. I guess the main issue is that it wasn't such uh, a common practice. Yeah. There weren't as many data scientists. Yeah. But, but now, applying AI, language models, and that kind of stuff is, is ready at hand, first yeah. of all, it's much easier. Yeah. And, uh, and so your machines are you know, uh, very useful tools in that endeavor. Yeah. So, tell me, um, there, there's more to it than just machines though, right? Because you're not just focusing on machines, although I, I think we can talk about them as two separate subjects, but there's machines and there's software as well. Yeah. What can you say about the software that, that, that's part of the data science initiative? Yeah, sure, so absolutely. So um, as kind of the use case came to be for, for HP and, and customers demanding you know, high performance machines, we're saying like, hey great, we, we produce those already, here you go, go work with them. They're like, whoa, hey, you know, like all of our tools and systems are, are built to support the cloud. You know, we, we don't have the ability that, it's not easy to work in locally. Mm -hmm. um, so more and more we're looking at how can we enable that local compute um, for data scientists, make it easier. Um, so one of the first software solutions that we've come up with is uh, you know, our data science stack manager. Um, so really it's like, hey, you have your machine, but it takes a while to get your environment set up. You know, I need to bring in all my tools and packages into this environment. I have compatibility issues with my drivers. It's a pain to manage. Um, for some people, you know, it's not too bad. For others, especially if you're not super technical, um, could take weeks uh, to, to get set up. Um, so we created a simple software solution that enables you to do it in minutes. Um, and then really kind of going forward, it's like, what, well, what's the next step and what's the next thing that we can solve? Um, so there's stuff in the pipeline that we're ex really excited for, uh, hopefully next year to be able to present about uh, really enabling people to connect their, their workflows, where they're working locally, like you talked about, because a lot of things start locally or if they're scaling all the way up to the cloud, um, just giving them the platform to do all those things together. That's neat. I think there's, uh, there's strata, stratas of uh, focus when it comes to data science. I was talking to some uh, university group that just wanted to get going with GPU programming, yeah. but didn't want to manage the machine. They yeah. just wanted an environment. They wanted PyTorch, uh, KuPy, and a couple of other things installed. They didn't want to check which version of CUDA was installed. Um, 
I guess we're not talking about Vulcan so much and those kinds of like really low level stuff because I guess one of the things that uh, I know HP has been talking about is WSL, Windows, or Ubuntu, and that yeah. you can switch between them or choose whatever suits you best. In a lot of corporate environments, Windows is very manageable. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so, so what what uh, what have customers been telling you about sort of their preferences in that kind of, in that yeah. respect? Yeah. Well, it's really kind of an awareness issue. A lot of people don't know about WSL two, which that's is that's surprising like, to yeah. me. I, yeah. I feel like that's one of the main features of Windows eleven and ten that. Yeah. that yeah, we've been a big, we've worked really closely with Microsoft to enable that and to push it out. Um, but obviously, you know, what's the benefits of Windows, like you talked about from an IT security standpoint, you know, I have all my systems and tools built around that. Yeah. Um, from a productivity standpoint, it's, it's really easy to use. Um, but then from a data science perspective, like I want to work in Linux. Um, so how do I do that? WSL2 is just a great way to work within Windows uh, in the Linux environment. Yeah. Yeah, but a lot of people don't know about it, which well, is Well, I mean, so for the people that don't know, Windows is actually, well, there's great things about Windows and Linux. And trust me, I've been a kernel developer. I'm, I'm not even a Linux person. There's a, you know there's an old joke that used to be, uh, people that run BSD do it because they like Unix, and people that run Linux do it because they hate Microsoft. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Windows actually has the ability to have multiple ABIs in parallel so that it could support OS2 warp, POSIX, and multiple. And so WSL1 was a way of uh, exposing the WSL user space uh, sort of interface to the kernel, but WSL2 is an actual Linux kernel running in user space on Windows, yep. and what, what they've done in Windows 11 is really accelerated, so disk access, network access, and a bunch of other things is not native speed, but good enough for development purposes. Yeah, absolutely. It's very pleasant to develop on a WSL2 yeah. environment locally. The only thing I found doesn't work is Vulkan stuff, so if, if you guys are going to try and do video games, I guess that, that'll be a little tough, but, but yeah. uh, Torch uh, and all your regular ML tools work yep. in WSL2. Yeah, yeah, and that's exactly what we're doing when we're using our stack manager. We're bringing it in through WSL2 um, to create that environment. All right, okay, so let's talk about hardware, and let's separate it into mobile workstations and workstations. Yeah. Uh, tell me about HP's uh, workstation lineup. There, sure. there are tiers of, of ability and, and you know, what's at the top so that yeah, people know. Yeah, absolutely. So you know, we have a number of different platforms within our mobile and desktop workstations. Um, kind of starting at mobile and at the lowest tiers are Firefly. Um, it's lightweight, but still high performance. Um, if you're doing probably a lot of data analysis, uh, visualization might be good for you, especially if you're really mobile. Um, moving up, you have your studio and power uh, platforms. Um, and then you have our ZBook Fury. Um, which is a high performance. The thicky. Yeah, it's a thicky. It's a, yeah, it's a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a big boy mm. um, for for decent compute, uh, of course. Um, and then on the workstation side. But, but what's the difference between a workstation laptop and a regular laptop then? If sure, you're... it's the it's the quality of the GPU and the CPUs, right? So you have inter enterprise grade CPUs and GPUs, um, you know, just on a higher performance spectrum. Right, because there's quadro GPUs in the Fury. Yes. And there's and it's a Xeon also. Yeah. I think it even has ECC memory or something, right? On the yeah, Fury. Yeah, so. Yeah. And our G10, our Generation 10 is coming out in the yeah. next couple months. I mean, one thing that struck me about the Fury, and so I have the, um, I have the ZBook. Okay. And uh, the Studio, ZBook Studio. 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 Okay. Uh, which is uh, the 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 best one you can get that's not a thicky. Yeah. And uh, the thing that matters to me, it has lots of other cool stuff like RGB keyboards and a nice screen and whatever, and, and a good GPU. But really, it's that the fan and, and the cooling on it is so huge. Yeah. So I, I run heavy stuff on it, and it gets really hot. And I used to have this old laptop that I really liked. I, I, I have, uh, I'm not uh, biased. I can like many laptops. Yeah. yeah. So I liked this old Razer laptop that I had. It was a nice laptop, but I was playing Doom Eternal on it all summer. Yeah. And after a while, it was so hot that the battery melted it. Yeah. It shouldn't have to be that way. The workstation should be able to take the beating. And that's when I've found that the Fury and my studio, even though it gets hot, the fans, I mean, they, they really cool the machine well. Yeah. So that, to me, is a defining facet of a, of a laptop that, that's meant for work as opposed to just like a nice yeah. looking one. Yeah, in general, workstations, what differentiate them from just normal kind of PCs is the expectation that they're going to be running 24-7, mm. right? So not just, hey, I'm going to game for a couple hours and I'm going to shut it off. Um, but these devices are meant to be really workhorses. 
Um, and the other is they're meant to be workhorses in an office environment. Right. Right. So acoustics is really important. Right. And so really where we do, from a hardware perspective, a lot of our investment in testing is in the um, airflow through the devices. So how do I keep my GPU cool and not dump that air into my CPU and you know, overheat everything? Um, but also, how do I make sure it's doing that in a way that you're not hearing a, you know, an air turbine in the background? That's that's a great important. segue to workstations because I have to say I am, I was uh, positively surprised when I ran the Z8 workstation, the biggest uh, one, yeah. <coughs> which can be extremely loud. Yep. But when it's idle, is is whisper quiet. Yeah. That was very cool. Yeah, yeah, it's really impressive what we can do uh, within our in our labs and developing those type of things. And that's but it's really because there's like channels inside yeah. it. It's not like a PC like the one I have at home. It yeah, what's what, what's kind of missed, um, you know? So we have our Z8 Fury on display uh, here at the show in our glass. Oh right, case. yeah, it's in yeah. the in the glass case. You yeah. guys should go yeah. look yeah. at so it. If you haven't seen it, you'll see the four GPUs uh, that are there. Um, but what you kind of miss when you take the shroud off is how we are able to direct the airflow through that device where each GPU is having its own unique airflow and it's being directed and curved through the device so that you know, you're not having any sort of temperature degradation across different GPUs or into the CPU, which is really important. And it is like high pressure air. It's almost yeah. like a bike pump being like physically pressed over it. Yeah. Because that CPU needs that kind of cooling. Uh, yeah. what, what CPU is in that one? Uh, in the one here? Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure exactly. It's one of the new Xeons Xeon, that, yeah. that you like, you, it's, it's really hard to cool it. Yeah. Because it has 56 cores. 56 cores, that's 100, right. 100, uh, what is it, 112 threads, I guess, that makes it, right? Yes, yep. I could make use of that. Yeah, good math, yep, absolutely. Okay, so uh, what else can you do with the workstations? What if, what if you don't want to have them next to your desk? Uh, sure, so if you don't want them to have you next to your desk, uh, which is becoming much more popular with remote solutions, uh, you know, some people say like, hey, I, I work at home, I don't have room for. I can't have it next to my desk. It yeah. turns my room into a sauna after it's, 15 it's minutes. It's hot. It, you know, it's uh, it's loud. You know, it, the workstations aren't that loud, but you know, it can get loud. Or I, I just don't have the space. Um, so we have you know some great uh, new solutions. HP Anywhere uh, is a solution that we're also featuring today, um, which is about being able to remotely connect into workstations. Where that workstation's in, you know, an office, uh, you know, in a data center, in the cloud, wherever it is, um, HP Anywhere allows you to connect it. That have like a uh, you know in-person experience with this remote device. Mm. Um, it's a great technology. It's a company we at HP acquired a couple years ago, Teradici, uh, to, uh, now it's branded as HP Anywhere. Okay, so it lets you work on your machine, but you don't have to have it next to your desk. Yeah. What if you're doing something like uh, CAD or something that requires a bit more precision? I, I know that remote desktop is not a super pleasant experience when you're yeah. using something that requires color accuracy or you know, you're looking at a 4K screen or something like Absolutely. that. Absolutely, yeah, and that's the secret sauce with uh, HP Anywhere, where the priority, you know, it was built for people doing, um, like media entertainment, where color accuracy was of the utmost performance, uh, importance. You couldn't have color drop. And so, um, really, you know, the color clarity is, is best in class, and then the way the technology works, um, the latency is super low. Right, so when you're turning a model, for instance, if you're doing a CAD, if you're working typically in remote environments, it will be uh, very, let's say, non-smooth uh, when you're rotating or looking at it. Um, with the HP Anywhere solution, um, you know, depending on your network activity, but in most cases, that's completely solved. It's a pretty mm -hmm. incredible experience. I have the, uh, like I said, I have the studio laptop with a 120 hertz screen. Yeah. And so stuff is really smooth when you rotate it, and so when I'm doing visualizations, it's OpenGL accelerated, and it's nice and smooth on the screen. It's a pretty pleasant experience. Yeah. But I guess I just gave away that I use HP Anywhere because I, I don't have the Z8 next to my desk anymore yeah. precisely because it, it's like a hair dryer. Yeah. It just heats up the room. So now it's at the office. But uh, where are things headed now? I, I got a bit of pushback from this one person that was saying, why would you have a workstation? We have the cloud. And I can't answer for everybody, but yeah. I can say for my own part that Getting an instance in the cloud that's equivalent to the Z8 is basically impossible. Yeah. So that, that's just, I can't get that machine there. That's the first yeah. thing. I mean, I have Opteron disk in the machine with uh, 20 gigabyte a second read speeds per stick. I mean, it just doesn't exist. But then the second thing is, in terms of the developer experience, I like developing here, pushing, uh, developing in a container, pushing it to AKS on Azure. And yeah. I don't see these things as mutually exclusive. No, absolutely. What do you see at customers right now? Where are things headed? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's people out there who say like, hey, you know, we do everything in the cloud, we, we don't want to do anything local. Um, you know, that, that may be 
what's best for you. It depends on your workflow. Um, but what more and more what we're seeing is that uh, a lot of people like starting local. They want to iterate, they want to move fast, rapidly prototype with their model development. Um, and then like you talked about, scale in the cloud. Um, and that's really what the cloud's best made for, is scaling. Um, but you're exactly right, there's a number of reasons why working local might be the best solution. Um, you know, it, it could be you know, data regulations and requirements. I, I'm not allowed to use the cloud. Um, it could be that, you, like you mentioned, I can't find the exact kind of performance like you would get out of Z8 in a cloud instance. Um, you know, just because the cloud's there doesn't mean it has the right GPUs for what you're trying to do. Um, but you know, we view it very much as, hey, you know, for some workflows, the right place might be your local. For many others, it's the cloud, and it's our job to enable the clear onboarding uh, and enabling you to work wherever you want to work. Mm. You know, the right compute at the right <coughs> time. Um, and that's really a guiding principle for us when we're developing new products and services. Some customers have, have appreciated a lot that we've come with the machine and said, don't worry, we can fix a machine with GPUs on it, no matter what your sort of cloud setup is. Yeah. And when the work is done, you can rack, rack mount the machine yeah. in your colo you know, setup or wherever you have your, your local stuff. For government customers, that's been the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, I think people don't, don't appreciate too the fact that these devices are designed to be potentially be rack mounted, to, to be in a uh, kind of a data, can be in a data center uh, environment if you want to. Um, so there is rackability, there is scalability within the machines. Um, and then, yeah, just from a kind of price per performance perspective, depending on what you're doing and how consistently you're doing it, could be a very effective option for you. Yeah. So, I mean, one thing to consider when it comes to the price of these machines is that you write them off after three years. Yeah. So you have to take the price and divide it by three. Yeah. That's the first step. When you're comparing to the cloud or whether you're comparing to whether you should have two data scientists that are sort of uh, mid-tier or whether you should have one data scientist and then give them a Z8 yeah. and what they can achieve with that. One expensive data scientist, and if you think it's expensive to hire a pro, wait till you hire two amateurs. <laughs> yeah. But just to whet the appetites of everybody here, we have about two and a half minutes left. I want them to know how cool the top tier Z8 is, and I want people to know here, when it comes to the top tier Z8 or the ZBook Studio and these kinds of things, in terms of the budget of your IT department, these are a drop in the ocean of all the money that's being spent on random experiments. And if it can just inspire you a little bit, we've been talking about developer advocacy here yeah. for two days now, in the terms that the developer experience is uh, underestimated, the yeah. significance of it. So tell people, uh, the top, top tier machine, what, what, what can they expect? What does it have in it? What is it? Sure, uh, for the Z8 Fury, I mean, like you mentioned earlier, it's got a Xeon core processor, 56 cores, um, pretty impressive, but really it's about the GPUs. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we can, within a super single socket, we can support four, up to, uh, four uh, NVIDIA A6000 ADA GPUs. How much um, GPU memory is that? Oh gosh, uh, I don't even know. Um, more I think it's than 160 that. gigs, right? 160, yeah, yeah. Um, up to two terabytes of RAM, I mean, it's just... Even more, 190 yeah. gigs of yeah. memory. Yeah, yeah. so right. I mean... Two TB of RAM, you yeah. said? Yeah, so we're just, we, you know, we're joking over there, it's like, hey, you know, we want to challenge people to try to max out the performance of this mm. machine, mm. Uh, because I, it's going to be, a, it's a beast. I, I've had a chance to play on some of these machines, and it's not easy to do benchmarks that actually use everything. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, you can run Prime 95 on it or something, but writing your own code that uses all the cores is yeah. not super easy. Yeah, yeah, that is one of the big challenges is, you know, we, we consider it a benchmark breaker. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of the traditional benchmarks, yeah, you're used to running it, it takes five, six minutes. Yeah. This machine can run in seconds. All right, yeah. I hope that whet your appetites. If you haven't seen the machine, go over and look at it. Uh, talk to everybody at the booth. They're super helpful and friendly. If uh, people are watching online, where should they go to check out Z stuff? Yeah, so um, you know it's pretty easy. Uh, go to HP uh, Z workstations, and you can find our whole lineup of uh, Z books, Z mobile work, uh, workstations, and our desktop workstations. Awesome, cool. Thanks Thank for you. the walkthrough. I hope Absolutely. you guys enjoy that. I'll be seeing you at the next session very shortly. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.